Well, I guess it's time to touch base with everybody. See how everybody's doing. I'm not ready to just jump back out there yet, so... Specifically the R, I'm a little bit concerned yes, about. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. That's kind of going to be a tough situation with what happened with Matriarch Benezia, but... I don't know, she's she's probably tougher than she looks. Why am I glad to be off of Novaria? I don't know which was worse, the cold or the corporations. One will freeze your balls off, and the other will sell them out from under you. With all due respect, Commander. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, he doesn't seem to, to have much else to add. Right, see ya. And actually, I'm rather interested in Garrus' opinion on the whole thing. I, I kind of... I view Garrus as being this... Turian that's like wise beyond his years. That takes me right back in. Still getting used to the layout of my ship. All right, here's Kaiden. Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? Killing Saren's, uh, what was Benezi anyway? Second in command? Advisor? Anyway, it should set him back a bit. I'm sure Dr. Tassoni's heard him though. Poor kid. I yeah, see, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Any opinion on the Rachni? Off the record? If we had the option, I'd as soon have left it to the Council. We weren't out here during the Rachni War. I'm not sure we have any business getting involved. Any opinion on the Rachni? If we we weren't out here during the Rachni War, I'm all right. Not sure well, we have any business getting involved. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander. I don't know. Kaiden's just. He's kind of uh. What's the word? How can I describe him? Boring. Okay, we got some new weapons in here: the Stinger Four, the Storm Five, and the Reaper Four. Let's check this out, actually. Storm 5. That's ah, a little bit better. I get more shots and more accuracy, basically. Let's take it. And what about the Stinger? More shots, a little bit more accuracy, but quite a bit more damage over here. I'm going to keep the Raikou. These ones, I'm just going to turn into Omni Gel. I should actually check all of these. Like, just the crappy ones. There's no point in me really keeping them. I could sell them, but they're not going to be worth very much. I have a whole bunch of sniper rifles. I like to keep some of them just in case uh, we end up bringing out people that specialize. We'll keep the rest. Actually, hold on. 166. It's quite a bit better than the Reaper, so let's get rid of that as well. Actually, that's these ones we can probably sell. They're probably worth a bit more. All right. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? Nothing new from I her. Go. Goodbye, Commander. This will be interesting. I hope. If you are here to talk about Benezia's death, you need not bother. She brought it upon herself. Which is true, but... Don't pretend it doesn't bother you. She was your mother. She was. But she was not. I prefer to remember Benezia as she used to be. Before she was corrupted by Sovereign's power. I blame Saren. And if I were you, I'd want revenge. We'll get her fired up a little bit. We have bit. enough reason to stop Saren. I do not need to add revenge to the list. <laughs> Benezia chose her path, just as I have chosen mine. I am with you until the end, Shepard. Maybe we could pick up where we left off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you. Oh. And making a fool of myself in the process. As I said, I am not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met, Shepard. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. Your kind always seemed so rushed and high-strung. Well... Compared to you guys, we are pretty short-lived. We don't have the luxury of time. An Asari can live for a thousand years. 
We're lucky if we hit 150. <laughs> that is true. At first I thought that was a weakness of your species. After spending time with you and your crew, however, I think it may actually be an advantage. You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating one. You're scared of us? Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy sees humanity as something of a bully. You run over anyone in your path to get what you want. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. Why me? There is a reason the Council chose you to become a Spectre. They saw something special in you. The best of what humanity has to offer. I looked into your history. I know what you did on Torfin. Ye. I cannot even imagine how horrible that must have been, but you did what had to be done. Now you're digging into my past? Invading my privacy? I am sorry. I know it was wrong, but after our last conversation, I was too embarrassed to approach you directly. I was afraid I would say something stupid again. Well. I wanted to know more about you. To understand what made you into the man you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. I'm pretty sure she's putting down some vibes. Are you sure you're interested in me? Or is it my visions of the Protheans? I admit, your connection to the Protheans had something to do with my initial interest. But it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard. But I was not sure if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. She's pretty I thought forward. there might already be a relationship between you and Chief Williams. Well, I don't really... I don't really know. I don't think there's anything major. Williams and I are just friends, nothing more. My mistake then. I am not as adept at understanding human relationships as I thought. She's probably misconstruing her jealousy but for that. what about us, Shepard? Is there a mutual attraction, or was I wrong about that too? No, you were right. There is something between us. I knew it, and I knew you felt it too. But does this not seem rather strange? Why do I feel so close to you? We have only known each other a short time. We are from two different species. We have almost nothing in common. This makes no sense. Saren wants both of us dead. That's something. That is not the most <laughs> romantic reason. I thought it was pretty romantic. You make it all sound so dangerous. A little danger makes things exciting. This is all a bit overwhelming. I am not used to this. You. I need some time. <laughs> Take all the time you need, Liara. I'll be here. Thank you, Shepard. Let's... Let's just talk about something else for now. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? Benezia was swept up in events beyond her control and lost herself. She fell under the spell of indoctrination and became part of the very thing she wanted to stop. But I will remember and honor how she lived, not how she died. My mother was strong, kind, and beautiful, and now she is gone. Are you going to be okay? You are kind to ask, Shepard. I do miss her, and I grieve for what happened to her. But I will not let my grief interfere with what we are trying to accomplish. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Oh, I think she's told us this already about the, uh... Like what? This is Most the whole, like, the mating thing, yeah. Centered around our mating. We still require a I don't understand. The... We... Yes. We pass these I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Okay. Liara, thank you for the info. Appreciate that. Now, I'm probably gonna go and get my head chewed off by Ashley. She's a feisty one. But... I'm not, I don't have to commit to anybody yet. I can... There's lots of aliens in space, if you know what I'm saying. Fish in the ocean, stars in the sky, elves at Christmas. It's all a thing. 
Okay. Let's talk to the requisitions officer, Looking actually. For supplies? We have some money now. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Okay, look at this. We actually have quite a bit of money. This is kind of impressive. Um... The Kessler 5 is not as good as what I have, actually. And I don't think I can wear the heavy armor. Let's see what I can sell. Not a whole lot. I can sell a bunch of these rounds that I'm not going to use. All these level 1 items can go. Maybe even level 2s. might not seem like much, but every little bit counts. Do I have more armor upgrades that are level 3? Yeah, I do. Okay, so all the level 2s are going to go. And the value is actually pretty decent. That'll be good for now. Commander, good to see you. You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I bet you have. Anything? I remember the Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating them? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts, organs. <laughs> what? We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. So what was it? Both, actually. But it took us a while to figure that out. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was... The match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Oh, I gotta hear about the Krogan testes. You're kidding, right? <laughs> Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility. Makes sense. <laughs> counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 <laughs> for a full set. They got four nuts? What? Somebody's making a killing out there. What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees. Somebody's for making a killing. To see if I oh, can get them to talk. That's good. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Good thinking. Blackies are always easier to scare. Exactly. Though in this case it paid off in a different way. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body. What the hell? Fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes. Walking, living test tubes. He was growing parts inside these people? That's nutty. Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. <laughs> Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them wow. Were mess. But only on the inside. What? No this is crazy. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down. But CSEC headquarters countermand. Oh yeah, CSEC. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties if the ship was destroyed so close to the citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. He just used them to make more organs. 
they wouldn't listen. No wonder you hated it there. Those idiots just let him fly away. Yes, they did. I went to Pavan and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. A few casualties is a small price to pay to stop someone like that. Agreed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those hostages might be wishing they'd died by now anyway. I just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart, his idea of the <laughs> book, I, I told the military, but they weren't convinced. That's that punny. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. Oh, we'll check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Saleon, I want to be there when you find him. Definitely. Okay, cool. That... I want to find that guy. That sounds really interesting. What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system, I needed to eat, I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help, that's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war, but the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared. One of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding. At least yeah. for one generation. Yeah, put those four nuts to use. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. A crush. He wanted to talk. Does that mean fight? We met at the Hollows. Near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from. And where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. It sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well... Oh. There are some laws that even we hold sacred. What? Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. Okay, now I can see why he's holding on to this. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. That's crazy. Well, now I feel for so you. Long, Rex. Even sure. more. Um, I'll worry about this stuff when we take you out on missions. Oh, before I go, you said you're serving with Commander Shepard now? We saw him on the news here. He's cute. <laughs> Later, Sid. Yeah, yeah. Tell me you didn't hear that. You're a sister, I assume? Until I get home and kill her. <laughs> That's Sarah, the youngest. Surprised to see you here, sir. Thought you'd be chatting up, what's her name? Tasoni? Liara. 
Why would you think that? Scuttlebutt says you got a bit of a thing for her. I could understand why. The crew's off limits with the regs against fraternization. And at least she looks like a woman. <laughs> this cat fight is going to get out of hand. You think I'm interested in Liara because she's the only one I'm allowed to date? So you are interested in her. Of course, it could be politics. Alien diplomat's daughter, us under orders to make nice with the bug-eyed monsters. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to walk a very tight line between these two ladies, I can tell. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With Dad on duty so much, I had to help Mom raise them. Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah, took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized, but he never made it above servicemen third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be, able to raise kids while dad's away on a six month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us though. So she's tough. I see where you get it from. You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest, she's still in high school. With four girls, Dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. <laughs> I can understand that. Where did you grow up? All over. Same as you, I expect. All over. I transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. I was an only child, but I get the idea. At least one of my parents was always on duty. Yeah, military families, eh? With schedules like that, it's a wonder we ever have kids anymore. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Bonded? Sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did, Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. Where were you when this was going on? I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen LY away. Light years? Close enough to talk I'm regularly, guessing? Too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. So, this boy is being too aggressive. If he really liked her, he wouldn't be pushy. Yeah, of course. If he didn't ask at all, I'd wonder if he thought Sarah was ugly. <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree <laughs> and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Oh, man. Good thing Mom and Dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. Why didn't you tell the police? She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike would both become household names. It was a small colony. I said it was her call to make, that we should let her do it her way. Mom was pretty pissed about that. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lynn did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She oh, that's cool. Weird. Likes big skirts and tops you have to tie her into. They do great things to her figure, though. <laughs> so, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand to hand. You said all of your sisters learned Lynn something? did pistol practice. Abby just. They do great things to her figure, though. Did anything happen while you were home? My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what oh. he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look. This, let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. What? I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk, and there's blood everywhere. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight-up puncher. 
When he swung, she just... She wasn't there anymore, and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was going to end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. A little bit late for that, she Mike. Hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. Hmm. Where was your father during this? Wasn't your family stationed near him? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that love me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. <laughs> this is poetry? I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at 100 meters doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't spread it around. So... Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Oh. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. So behave. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? I don't judge. I personally, I'm not a God guy, but uh, whatever flows your, your boat. Your are your business. I'm your commanding officer, not your moral compass. Just my commanding officer, huh? We'll have to see about that. I'll look forward to our next talk. You should. I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. What's your opinion on the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? Yeah. They were dangerous, Skipper. They proved that 2,000 years ago. I think it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It, it was yours. You know, you really should talk to Chisoni about her mom. She has to be hurting. Just saying, Skipper. Thanks for the we'll advice. Talk later, Williams. Looking so, forward to it, Williams, Skipper. she's kind of like... She's like the tough girl, but beneath all of this defensive exterior, she's probably quite the softy. We're going to talk to Tally. Let's actually, let's hit up Engineer Something Adams here. Something I can do for you, Commander. Ah, uh, there's nothing else. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you smiling again. So <laughs> I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. There we go. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Steren's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. Maybe you can bring back Saren's head on a platter. What are you hoping to find? Usually, people bring back something like a derelict ship we can use for salvage. But I need something bigger. There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. Okay, well... <laughs> all this talk about the Admiralty Board, and you didn't tell me that your father was on it. That's a pretty major deal. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies. And they're not above using me to get to him. Yeah, no pressure, seriously. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. 
If I don't, it's like I failed, and that reflects badly on both me and my father. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. Like what, though? We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Seren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First, we stop Seren. Then I'll worry about my own problems. Okay, well, let's just find out about your father a little bit. What was your father like? It wasn't easy growing up as the daughter of one of the Admiralty. Even before he joined the board, he was a prominent figure. People looked to him for leadership. He had to set an example, and he expected the same of his daughter. Plus, he was pretty strict, a military man through and through. He never allowed me to settle for anything less than excellence. As a kid, I sometimes felt like he was pushing me too hard. But now, I'm old enough to appreciate what he taught me. The world doesn't owe us anything. If we want something in life, we have to earn it. Where was your mother in all this? Mother was around, but she always seemed to kind of blend into the background. Almost like she was overshadowed by my father. He tends to do that to people. She passed on about five years ago. Oh, sorry. Some airborne virus that swept through the fleet. Happens sometimes when the filters start to break down. I think my father took it pretty hard. After she was gone, he became even more focused on his work. I think that was his way of dealing with the grief. Sounds like a tough upbringing. You don't resent your father at all? Like I said, it wasn't easy. My father's not the kind of person you bond with. And he wasn't around all that much. Too busy. People counted on him, and he took his duties seriously. Even when he was around, he always seemed a bit distant. Like his mind was always somewhere else. Come to think of it, I can't ever remember seeing him smile. Not once. It's like he was always weighed down by all that responsibility. Seems fun. I mean, I know he cares about me, but he never really showed it. Not in the usual way. I guess the best thing I can say about my father is that I respect him. I want to talk about something else. Like what? I should go. <laughs> I See love that. I want to talk about something else. Bye. Okay. Well, everyone seems cool. I mean, as cool as they can be. So, I think it's time to get back to work. Myself. A couple of places we could go. Uh, we could go back to the Citadel. There's probably- there's a couple of things back there. I remember some transmission earlier on. That, uh, said we had to go back there. But then, there's also this, like, Dr. Salion That could be really interesting to check out. And that would get Garrus involved. And it seemed like he was pretty interested in doing that. So let's just check this out, see where it is. Uh, so let's just do a review of everything. So here's Salion. Head to the Herschel system in the Kepler Verge. Okay, Asari writings. Meet with Nasana. That's in the Embassy Lounge on the Presidium. Uh, Solarian artifacts. We have the Hades Gamma Cluster. Strenus System, Horsehead Nebula. Return, and we have to go to the Citadel and inform the Admiral of their fate of these uh, missing Marines. So, I think what we're gonna do is actually head to Leon's last known whereabouts. Then after that, we'll head to uh, the Citadel. So, the Herschel system in the Kepler Verge. Let's look for this. Good timing, Commander. We got a transmission coming in from the Citadel. Uh-oh. Top priority clearance. Is it the Ambassador? It's not his signature. I think it's from the Council. I'll patch it through to the Comrade. Okay, hold up. Hold up. We may have to head there first. If this is serious. Commander Shepard, we've received information that may be critical to your mission against Saren. What kind of information? We've received an urgent message from one of our infiltration regiments in the Traverse. 
You mean spies. <laughs> Spectres tend to attract attention, Commander. But they are only one arm of the Council. Special task groups are often a better option for monitoring developing situations. We currently have several infiltration units scattered throughout the border regions of Citadel space. This particular unit was gathering intel on Saren. What did they find? Unfortunately, the message we received was little more than static. Well, okay. The infiltration team must be in a situation where they can't set up proper interstellar communications. But the message was sent on a channel reserved for mission critical communications. Whatever they were trying to tell us, we know it was important. Considering your interest in Saren, we thought you might want to investigate this. Find out what happened to our team. The signal originated from the planet Vermeer. I'll look into it. The Council prefers not to become involved in the specifics of Spectre activities. We only want you to be aware of all your options, including Vermeer. Good luck, Commander Shepard. We will keep you advised if we learn anything else. Well, it's interesting. It's not a guaranteed uh, location of his whereabouts. But if it was something coming in on specific comms channels, then we will we will definitely check it out. What is Race Against Time? Find the conduit. We need to explore Pharos, Novaria, and Artemis Tau. All right. Let's uh, let's go find out about the Saleon first, just because my curiosity is getting the best of me. Herschel system in the Kepler Verge. Okay, let's look for this here. There's Kepler Verge. Here's Herschel. Urgent message from Alliance Command coming in. I'll patch it through. What now? Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here, and you're the only one that can handle it. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills uh -oh. is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. Then how does it do that? We didn't do anything illegal here. They only do virtual things they're programmed to do. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI Corps and manually disable it. Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail-safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We'd prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answered the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military. And right now, we need you. The VI controls all the facilities, weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Well, okay. We will, uh, we'll get to it. We've got a couple of things going on here. Let's check out what this is. MSV Fidel. Okay, so we can actually board straight from here. Human design. Let's just check out these other things first. Klugon. Matol. Tunjal or Tungle. Klobaka. All right. So it looks like we're just gonna board. So, this must be where he's residing. 